Hi everyone, in this video I'll be showing you a few ways to create trace monoprints. Now a monoprint is a variable print that you can reproduce because you have a matrix. So here my matrix is a drawing on tracing paper. Okay, If I were just to say lay down my paper on top of my inking slab and draw into it, without a matrix, this is a monotype. Okay, So a monotype is a one-of-a-kind image. I prefer a technique where instead of laying the paper face down into the ink, you have your printing paper face up and you have a second sheet of tracing paper that you've inked up and you lay that on top of your on top of your printing paper. And so if I were to do the exact same process the lines are much more crisp and notice that you're getting far less of the ink actually sticking to the surface of the paper. So if you're looking to get crisper lines and a little bit more control, then what I'm about to show you uh, will be really quite useful. All right, so what I just did here, these were monotypes because I didn't have a matrix that I was tracing over. Even though the imagery is similar, I can never reproduce it exactly the same each time. However, with my matrix, even though there will be some variation, I've still got the guide that I can reproduce on multiple surfaces. Now, a trace monoprint is called such because you're tracing the image and you're releasing the ink from the inked surface onto your print. So in order to do the process where you lie an inked sheet of paper on top of your printing paper, you're gonna take a piece of tracing paper and tape it down at the top and the bottom. And then you'll go to your inking slab, which you've already rolled out, charge the roller, and roll it over top of the tracing paper. Recharge the roller on the slab, roll it onto the tracing paper. It's gonna take you a few minutes to prepare this surface. And I would recommend that you go in both directions vertically and then horizontally. And notice when I went horizontally, since I didn't tape the edges, I just held my paper so it wouldn't lift up or crinkle. So as you're looking at this paper, you can see that the ink is still sort of splotchy. So I need to continue to build up that ink until it looks nice and solid. So let's move this out of the way. I've already got a sheet prepared ahead of time and I'll show you the process. We'll do it first on a piece of rice paper. So I'm gonna lay my rice paper down and I'm going to take my image that I've drawn and I'm gonna center it on the rice paper. Since I have this on tracing paper, I can see through and it's very easy to center, but you don't need to have the image on tracing paper in order to do this. You could have your drawing on copy paper, even notebook paper would work. I am going to tape it down so that I can lift it up and drop it back down. Okay, I'm going to move that out of the way. Now I've got my inked up sheet of transfer paper. So essentially what you've got here is transfer paper. And I'm going to slide it down until I see it underneath my image. And then I'll also tape that transfer paper down. That just keeps things from moving around. Now there's a few different ways that you could get this ink to release from that tracing paper onto your printing paper. So it's face down. In order to get anything to release, we need to trace or push down onto it, right? So anytime that you're pushing down, that's releasing the ink onto 
the surface. You can use your fingernails. Um, you can use any number of things. I've got a mechanical pencil, which I like to use without any lead sticking out so that it's just the hard plastic part. You can use a ballpoint pen, but keep in mind when you use a ballpoint pen, you end up drawing over your matrix and it can get a little muddy after a while. What I would suggest to you is to experiment with a few different types of utensils in order to make your marks and see which one you like the most. As I'm tracing over this image, I'm very careful not to rest my hand on the image because anywhere that you press down, even a fingerprint like that, will release the ink and end up in your finished print. Okay, I'm going to switch over to this barbecue skewer, which I found when I was just looking around the house for things that I might use for printmaking. And I like the barbecue skewer because it's got a very thin pointed tip. So it's sharp without actually scratching through my tracing paper. And because I'm on my kitchen table, I don't want to use something like a nail or, you know, a screwdriver where it would probably make a cool mark, but I would also be making indents in my table. So as you're tracing over this, just remember, keep your hands away from the ink so that you're not accidentally pressing down and transferring any of that ink. And you can try some things, you know, you don't have to stay totally true to your drawing. But the drawing here, that's what makes this a mono print. Now, let's say that I revealed this and maybe I forgot to trace something down there. Because I've got my paper taped down, I can just flip it back up and I can add a little bit more imagery. So that's just a way of registering the image very easily. So up here, where you see this sort of like splotchy mark, that's where my fingerprint pushed down. So you can get value with this technique. It doesn't just have to be about the line. Uh, trace mono print, it, it brings together printmaking and drawing in a way that I find really exciting. And you might say, well, why not just make uh, an ink drawing or a pencil drawing? Well, you can't reproduce those drawings as easily and you're getting marks with this type of printmaking that you really you're not going to get any other way if you look up close at this image we see like a softness to the line that very closely mimics an intaglio technique called dry point okay dry point is when you're using a metal plate you scratch into it and the lines that are below the surface they hold the ink and they're kind of fuzzy Okay, this is a very low-tech way of achieving something that you would otherwise need to press in order to create. I also want to show you how to bring a painterly aspect to the trace mono print. So you can cut stencils. I cut this stencil out of a, a piece of my Stonehenge paper. I just traced the inside of a roll of tape, stuck the scissors through it so I could get you know, one side of the scissors through and then cut around. You could, of course, use your X-Acto knife if you've got it. If you're going to use stencils, this should remind you a little bit of silkscreen, right? Because silkscreen is a stencil technique. You can use stencils that are made out of any material. You could cut them out of tracing paper. You could use sketchbook paper. But just know that if you're using a thinner paper, it's not going to hold up as, as well. This stencil I've already used four or five times, and it hasn't buckled yet. So I put the paper down, and I used my watercolor, and I painted from the outside in. Okay, and this is important if you're using watercolor, outside in. If I were painting along the edge, some of the watercolor, because there's water in it, 
it would have migrated more outside of the lines. So just a tip. All right, so I made this image on here, just a simple image, and I wanted to react to the painting. So I laid a piece of tracing paper down first. I traced around where my paper was going to lie, and then I made a, a variation on the image that I just created that would sort of exist around this little orb that I've painted. All right, so once again, you would lay your paper down. And if you're worried about your paper moving, your printing paper, you could always tape it down along the top. And now I'm going to line up my tracing paper. And one thing I noticed, I'm gonna move this tape to the bottom so I don't end up covering up the image area. So my image does come really close to the top of the paper. I don't want to create some weird visual tension, so I'm just going to shorten that little diamond. So I've lined my tracing paper up. I'm also going to tape it down so that it doesn't move. And now I will drop my inked up sheet of tracing paper face down onto my printing paper. Okay, so you should be able to get a few prints out of this before you have to flip it over and recharge it by rolling onto your inking slab and rolling back onto this. And you'll know that you need to recharge it when the image starts to look light. If it starts to fade and your lines aren't looking nearly as dense as they did when you began. So I'm just going to trace a few aspects of this for demonstration purposes. So this is where it's really handy to have tracing paper because you can do these things where you're working in layers. It might not be printmaking the way that we would do if we had access to the press and things like that, but it's a way of making a print, reproducing your image without using all of this fancy equipment. After you graduate, you might not have access to that equipment, so it's really useful for you to know how to do these things. And these are processes that artists will incorporate into their paintings, right? You could ink up a sheet of paper like this or even ink up, I've seen people doing it with uh, cut pieces of grocery bags. And you could lay that over top of your painting and layer trace monoprint into your paintings. So there's a lot of pretty exciting possibilities. So remember that with this, it's not just about line. You can press down and create some value. So I'm going to fill in this little cloud in the background and see, see how that looks. So down here, here's a little bit of troubleshooting. Notice how my drawing continues below the moon, and this is actually how I'm linking my moon into my image. The drawing continues below the moon, but the ink does not continue. So what I can do here, because this paper won't move down anymore, because I've got it taped down here, I can lift this up. And cut that little bottom part off. So that way I can move the paper down, right? So now the ink covers the lower part of the image. And because everything's taped down, I can just drop the image back down and continue on along my drawing. 
Now, if I were making this drawing for my studio, I would really take my time because I'm moving quickly, some of my lines are a little bit looser than I would prefer. But like I said before, this process, it's about experimentation. So figure out what works for you, figure out how much or how little ink you need. And one layer might not be enough for you to realize your print. You might do one layer and then come back to it with something else. You can paint back into these and draw back into them. The reason that the print part exists is for you to have a repeatable matrix, something that you can return to, revisit, reinterpret. I think I do like my variation a little bit better than my original image, but I think it also still needs a little bit of work to integrate my painted aspect. So I might go back in and maybe paint into some of my diamonds to create a little bit of unity. Okay, there's so many ways to approach this process. So I am hoping that you guys will experiment with it. Try, try different modes of printing. Do, do the process where you lay your inked tracing paper on top. Remember, if you are doing that, periodically you'll need to recharge the tracing paper. So to recharge it, you would lay it face up. So now the ink side is up. You would go back to your inking slab, recharge the roller, and then roll back on top of your tracing paper. So you're just reloading it with material. The image, no matter if you're on rice paper or if you're printing on your thicker Stonehenge paper, you're getting pretty similar results. I will say that the, the rice paper tends to stick uh, a little bit more to the inked surface if you lay it face down. With with any of these processes, if you're touching the inked surface with your fingers trying to hold down your drawing, you are going to end up with those fingerprints. So keep your hands clear of the image area. Right? And that's it.